I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and you are very welcome to this Greenhouses Update Tour. So in this video we're going to have a look at my glass house where I keep my collection of, well I have a lot of succulents, I have some cacti, a lot of South African bulbs and a few larger specimens as well. Not to mention a permanently planted border over here of things that I can't grow outdoors here in Ireland. And after we finish having a look here at what's looking good and what's noteworthy, then we'll pass over to the uh, polycarbonate greenhouse, which is just behind us, and take a look at the collection there. It's not a collection there, but that's where I deal with things that need to go into the garden. So propagations of plants that are going to be planted out, my potted spring displays of bulbs and that sort of thing. So, let's get on with the video. Here we are tumbling into December and very soon Christmas will be upon us. And for me, that means a time to, I guess, to retire from the garden for, for the season and to perhaps enjoy my greenhouse plants just a bit more and my indoor plants too. So if you're new here, just to let you know that I garden in Southern Ireland in what roughly equates to as hardiness zone nine. Now the plants we see here in my glass house are ones that need winter protection. They can't do outdoors in hardiness zone nine. By the way, we don't use the hardiness zone system here in Ireland. Just take it as a rough guide. So in this glass house, what I do is I bubble wrap it, I insulate it, and that's this white stuff that you see over, and I put heat in it to keep it at a minimum of 5 degrees centigrade, 41 Fahrenheit, and that helps plants tick over. So I am not like maintaining a tropical greenhouse here where plants are expected to keep growing through the winter and I'm not maintaining things that really need an indoor house temperature of 10 degrees. It's just to keep things ticking over and um, alive for next year and I do that because of course it's very expensive to heat a greenhouse. So what do I have in here and what's looking good at the moment and uh, as you can see, it really is, it's quite crowded this year. I don't know what happened there, but I certainly seem to have a lot more plants than I did last year. Isn't it always the way, there's always something else we want to buy or, yeah, <laughs> anyway. So we have quite a lot of things looking quite n nice at the moment, but a surprise, which I discovered just now when, um, when having a look around for the video is this Brugmansia in flower and this is a Brugmansia sanguinea which some of you may recall I had planted in the greenhouse border over there just recently and had to get rid of because it was lifting the floor but I took cuttings and this cutting <laughs> it's flowering already so that's really great news. With Brugmansias of course you need to take cuttings from the top of the plant not from the bottom Top of the plant means that they'll flower more quickly um, than they will if you take the cuttings from the bottom of the plant. So I guess the first thing to show you is this big plant over here. And this is my Sparmania and it is in flower. And the reason why I grow the Sparmania, because this is a plant that wants to be a tree, is that I adore the large leaves. Now, in order to get the large leaves, you need to water this plant a lot. And I was a bit remiss this year. It did brilliantly last year, but not this year. So I think I just didn't water it enough. But the bonus is that at this time of year, in December, you get these fantastic, dainty little flowers. And I have some open, but there are lots more coming. Moving along the border which we have here, and the Sparmania isn't planted in the border, but this plant is, and this is the tree tomato. And <laughs> uh, this is one that needs to be pruned quite hard each spring in order to 
just get the big leaves and to stop the thing getting too tall. But I've left two fruits on it this year, which are ripening up nicely despite the cold temperatures. They are absolutely enormous. The cannas in the border are still looking great. And up here we have my protea, my king protea, which is flowering or budding up more early than usual, I think, because, yes, we have one flower that is on the cusp of opening. And beside my Sparmania, we have my Cymbidium collection, which has been placed on the wonky stand, the one that isn't great, it's not very strong at all. But these, as you'll recall, were repotted late because they just, well, they encountered a bit of a mishap. But I do have one in bud. The pink one is in bud. On the floor, I have lots of Echium wilpretii, which you'll recall I grew from seed this year. It's in various sizes, and I'll plant that out in spring once all danger of frost has passed. And also, I have my Aeoniums in the greenhouse this year. Now, you'll recall that last year I kept them in the unheated greenhouse and had a lot of losses. It was a bad winter. So they've come here into the five degree minimum glass house this year. Over here we have my tree ferns, which, yeah, there they are, still growing strong, still sending up new fronds. And I have two. The one at the front is a cyathea. I'm not sure which species at all. And the one at the back is Dixonia antarctica, the one that is most commonly available here in Ireland. Moving a little bit further over from there, and we have my dragon tree, which has done really, really well. And it was repotted this year, and it, well, it hasn't got the telltale trunk yet, but it is looking very, very meaty. And down here at the very back of the greenhouse, we have, well, some plants displayed on two units that have lived in the house up until this year. And that's those black metal jobbies you see there. They're a lot more sturdy than the one that the cymbidiums are on. And I have a mishmash here. I've got some more Echium wilpretii, some of the bigger ones on the lower shelf. In the middle shelf, I have some of my aloas and perhaps some hawarthias. And one thing that's looking really great at the moment is this rare impatience. And it is still in flower, still doing so wonderfully. Beside it, Pelargonium ardens, which is the blood red one, is leafing up again. So I will expect a flower spike from that very soon. On the lower shelf, we have my desis, most of which were recently repotted, and I did make a video about that. And I have a lot of succulents and cacti and bulbs here on the shelving. Veltimia is coming into flower now and sending up lovely spikes. This is the yellow variety, lemon it's called. Anyway, I'll put all the names up on the screen. Down on the floor here, we have my big bowl of the regular pink variety. And is that four spikes I see coming up this year? At least four anyway. And here we have Veltimia capensis, which doesn't show any signs of a flower spike yet. It has lovely glaucous foliage and as I recall it flowers a bit later than the others so I'll still be hopeful. At the very front of the staging here we have what is actually a pelagonium and you might be mistaken for not recognizing this plant as a pelagonium because it does have spiny succulent stems. It's well it's a succulent Caudex pelagonium and this is a winter flower so it has just come out of dormancy 
well, in the last few weeks, it is making lots and lots of nice green leaves. And I'll be hopeful for a magnificent flowering display before very long. If you look further down the shelving, you'll see Scylla madarensis, which is a blue bulb from Madeira that I have grown from seed and has never flowered for me. And a lot of these are coming into growth. This isn't the biggest one. The biggest one is further down the shelf. And I'll bring it up to show you. And there we go. And um, yeah, <laughs> it seems to have split into two bulbs because there's a second growth coming out here. But still no sign of flowers, which is really disappointing. And as I put it back here where it belongs, you'll notice behind the three Proteus I bought in Madeira earlier on this year and potted up in January, still doing well. And look at this funny euphorbia beside it. And do you see there's bits of white on it? Now you might think that I have some kind of mealies or, or whatever in my greenhouse. But actually, if we look closely, you can see that this white is actually the latex from inside of the plant kind of leaking out. Maybe there had been a little bit of damage there at the surface, I'm not sure, but it's not a pest. It's just the, the latex. And as we all know, that irritant latex is very common in uh, most euphorbias. On the lower shelves, we have a lot of Hymanthus, including Hymanthus coccinius, which I grew from seed a few years ago. And these have done really well. I mean, this one is quite big, but I mean, no sign of flowers yet, but that's grand. Oops, that water isn't good. And I wonder actually, should I bring them indoors? Because the best result I got with coccinius was when I brought it indoors. And speaking of Hymanthus coccinius, this one here is the parent plant. This is the one that produced the flower and the, the berries that I propagated the babies from. But can you believe after flowering, it's split because I now have two bulbs here in the pot, which is a bit of a disappointment because both of them are smaller than the original one that flowered. And look at this over here. This is a very unassuming South African bulb. It's a Hymanthus. And it looks very similar to Hymanthus albifloss, which we'll have a little glance at in a minute. It has the white shaving brush flowers, but its habit is that it doesn't open as wide. The flowers don't open as wide as the Hymanthus albifloss. But one thing I really love about it is the fat, fat bulb. It is just bursting with succulency, let's just say. And um, yeah, and it's so lovely to have this flowering. It's a first flowering for me. And we all know that first flowerings are so, so exciting. And here down on the floor, we have my Hymanthus albifloss which I've had for several years. It's a big specimen. A lot of bulbs now at this stage and it's in a big clay bowl. It has finished flowering, unfortunately. And someone asked recently about my alocasia and how it's doing and it's over here in the corner. I think it is now again too big for this pot and I'm going to have to divide it, which is not a job I'm looking forward to because, oh, it's so heavy. Just giving you a little bit of a pan down my shelving. It's in three layers because I have elevated the two back rows of plants using upturned plastic pots and leftover wood. And that just means that I have three heights on my shelving. And this shelving is used for small plants, small potted plants. I guess mostly succulents. It's the way it's gone in my life the last while because they're just so easy to take care of. I do have a few cacti, not a whole lot, but a few, and numerous South African bulbs, which are a big passion of mine. Ah! <laughs> 
Hello again, folks. My goodness, have you been here in the greenhouse all night? It's been a bit cold, I can tell you. <laughs> I had to stop filming yesterday because I ran out of battery. So we're back now the next day. And I can certainly tell you that it has been a very cold night. We had the first of the true frosts last night and the result is that there's a lot of frost even now on the grass and it's about it's about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Should have checked the time before I came out. Anyway, I guess at this stage you're well fed up with the glass house as you spent the whole night in it. So we're going to leave the glass house and go on over to the greenhouse, which is behind. And I will show you what I have to show you in there. So come on. And here we are in the greenhouse. And well, I can tell you it went down to minus zero here last night. And minus zero, isn't that a funny calibration? Anyway, I have a monitor and I monitored it. And while I kept the glass house to a minimum of five degrees, this greenhouse went down to zero. So you can imagine that I'm not keeping tender plants in here over winter, with the exception of my dahlias and callas, which is this big bubble wrapped <laughs> thing over here. Now these have been lifted, begonias, callas, dahlias, they've been lifted, they've been dried, they've been boxed up and then they've been surrounded with fleece. And I think that should be enough to help them come through the winter. And I'm just going to close the door here behind us because I really do want to keep the heat in. As you saw, the frost is still now on the ground. Okay, so <laughs> you probably see down here all of these clay pots. And why are they here? Well, they're drying because the very last job I did outdoors was to wash my clay pots with soapy water. And oh my goodness, what a very, very cold job that was. I felt quite sick after it, but they're done now, they're drying and now I'm going to put them away. The first thing I want to show you in this greenhouse is my spring pot displays, which I have over here just beyond the daffodil. And look at this daffodil prematurely flowering, but um, they're very, very welcome all the same. And here we have my potted tulips mostly and a few daffodils. And yes, I've added a few more to the collection since that last video when I potted them up. These here are Sweet Williams and these are going to add to my general front of the door pot display. And if we look closely, you can see that these daffodils are the first to poke their heads up. Well, first after the little Narcissus we just looked at. And these are Narcissus Cheerfulness, a beautifully scented, multi-headed daffodil. Now you may have been wondering what I have in the trunk here. And this is a very, very funny story. Okay, so as you can see, these are arums, so Xantidesia and calla lilies, basically the hardy ones that everybody grows outdoors. And you are not going to believe this mad story I'm going to tell you about them. But I bought these 13 years ago and I planted them in the garden. And I think they came up the following year and perhaps the year after that, but they then got squashed out by surrounding plants. And um, I think uh, basically the Virginia it just shows you what an anomaly the Irish climate can be that I could grow Xantidesia, which is a water loving plant in the same bed as Virginia, which, well, I mean, it tolerates water, but it's basically a dry plant. Anyway, the Virginia won out and the Calla was no more until this year when, as you'll recall, I did a revamp of the wefts side of the garden, including enlarging several borders. And the border that these plants were in had everything dug up and removed from it, and it was replanted with fresh new plants. 
I didn't see any sign of these calla lilies at the time. But a few weeks later, lo and behold, up they came. These green shoots from nowhere after not being seen for, well, about 10 years. Now, isn't that the strangest thing? Because normally bulbs, if they, if you, if they don't appear for a complete growing season, well, they're gone. Like if your tulips don't appear um, in spring and summer, then they're dead, they've rotted, they're gone. But I have noticed this kind of strange thing with aroids. Aroids, I think, are just a very peculiar family of plants. And I've seen it with um, arisema before, where an arisema didn't appear for a complete growing season and then popped up the following year. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I lifted them because they were just far too close to the plants I just re recently put in. And don't worry, they won't go to waste because my daughter is just building her own garden for the first time and she's in need of plants. Whoops. So you'll guess that I'm in for the winter now and I I'm very glad that I had my big project finished in time. That's when I planted the bare root beech hedge just behind here. It's all in the ground. I still have a little bit of plastic membrane to put down because I couldn't get my hands on the pegs that are that you um, hammer into the membrane to hold it in place. Um, so I still have that to do, but basically I'm in for the winter. And I do like that. It's time to, look in a bit more detail at houseplants and there will probably be houseplants videos coming from me soon. There may even be an orchid video in the offing. But as I stand here and talk to you, oh, I've just realized I forgot to plant these um, little tulips, the sprengery ones that I bought. These were like the first ones I bought and they're growing and I was gonna put these in the ground. But you know what? I am really not in the mood for planting them out in a frosty ground. So I think what I'll do is, because I've only got about six of them, I'll pop them into a pot and plant them out next year. Isn't it lucky I have a few pots handy? Which do you think is the deepest? <coughs> Maybe this? And isn't it handy that I have a bit of an old mix here? And this was what was left over from when I planted the bare root hedge. It doesn't have any grit in it. It does have fertilizer in it. It won't do the tulips any harm. They don't need it, but it won't do them any harm. So let's just add a little bit of grit in. And there we are. I will just put a label in this in a minute and give it a bit of a watering. But we've all done it. We've all <laughs> think we've finished. And then we find a packet of bulbs somewhere hidden. And, you know, like very often what we do is say, ah, blast it. I won't do anything. But you just stick them in the pot and in a sheltered place. And what's the worst that can happen? Tulips can be planted so, so late, even if you plant them in January, they are going to flower the following year. A little bit later than January is probably pushing it, but yeah. So there we go. And that brings me to the end of this greenhouses update, which I hope you enjoyed. And maybe, you know, <laughs> there's a little bit of food for thought in there in terms of plants and things to be looking out for, for your collection. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.